fun when uh, Masters and EDG didn't want to play into the Sivir, they just banned it. They took it straight off the board, and they knew Def's Callista was also pretty scary, so they removed that too. When the best team in the world is banning Sivir, maybe you should look at it. Yeah, probably worth yeah, a little bit it. of in investigation. Xiaogu opt to ban the Echo away from either Xie, Spirit, or Luka. I could see that being a Spirit pick. I could see him getting away with Echo. He's played Riven in the jungle, so... Yeah. Yeah, a little interesting. By Callista <laughs> is the targeted ban from WE. Xiaogu have got one left as Fizz and Victor have already been taken from the board. The last remaining ban. Will it be Sivir? Uh, I ex expect that it might transition into jungle priority again. Swift and or we had Rek'Sai and Gragas in the last game. Kind of curious to see those champions go through. But again, on 5.10, there's a lot more new champions to deal with. And obviously, the bans are responding to that. It is actually going to be the Nautilus. Yeah, Nautilus taken away from WE as they uh, Conan gets that removed. Rise is the last ban. Again, as you mentioned, this is 5.10. That explains why Rise is being taken, because he is so strong. That said, again, all of the jungles available, Sejuani, Gragas, Nunu, or even Alistar as the support pickup if you want to go that route. There are a lot of high-priority picks, and it all goes back to 5.10. There's a lot more champions to deal with, so a lot more bans are being spreaded than not so much emphasis on, on target banning it and kind of fine-tuning your strategy as everyone kind of feels out Fizz, Rise, and Echo. Yeah, it's kind of fun to see how Xiaogu are planning this ban phase out because they banned away the Nautilus and then immediately first picked Alistar, so some big priority showing for the bottom lane, though they let Sivir go through and, oh, come on, pick it up. Spirit looks at the Nidalee, one of his best carries, while Aluka looks at the Sivir. Switches it back to Gragas. Come on, go to the Nidalee. Go, Nidalee, Spirit. Do you, it. You can do it. We're cheering for you here. And Gragas. Okay, so it is going to be the Gragas and the Sivir. So happy to see WE immediately shift gears, uh, getting that priority pick onto Mystic. See if he makes more impact with it than he did Vayne last game. And likewise, it's a big denial away from TNT and what he's found most success on. Definitely have to keep track of Mystic's progress this game as compared to that of the Vayne as Xiaogu looked to put Hakarim on their side of the roster. Once again, V did exceptionally well last time. Maokai is still on the board, so we could have a similar matchup in Swift. Looking at that Sejuani there, she did receive a minor nerf in 510 to her W damage, but Swift says, you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Goes back to the Rek'Sai. I want to point out uh, V picking up the Hecarim here. I feel like he's almost forced into that matchup, despite the fact that Nar hasn't been shown yet. Nar has a very favorable matchup 1v1 into Hecarim just because he can itemize into that Frozen Mallet. But the fact that Sivir has already been shown by WE, Hecarim Sivir is just way too strong a combo. Obviously, the On the Hunt ultimate is going to give Hecarim just flat damage because of how fast he's moving on his devastating charge when he runs into you, mm. as well as the hard engage potential of Onslaught of Shadows. So yes, Hecarim's a very powerful champion still in the current meta, despite the kind of the tweaks that have been made on 5.10. But it's more of like a takeaway that we can't let you have Sivir and Hecarim. So we need to commit on this now. Yeah, so WE decide to opt towards a more team fight oriented composition as Thresh is locked in for Conan. And that's going to be Aluka on that rumble in the top lane. Kind of curious here. Not really an Aluka-style champion. Again, much yeah. more about the, the meta role-playing tanks like Maokai and uh, his Scion. And his Scion's been available, hasn't touched it. Ooh, you can see uh, right now Doinby looking at that LeBlanc as on the camera. You've got TCT hovering that over. Uh, does look like last pick is still open for Xie. And Tristana's locked in for TNT, and yeah, that's going to be the same Rek'Sai LeBlanc combo from previous game. The kill pressure and absurd damage that can come out of the 2v2 in the mid jungle of Rek'Sai LeBlanc is insane. And again, like you said, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, and with that, you've got Xie looking for his last counter pick into this combination. And it is a pretty tricky combination because mid game, you've got LeBlanc and Hecarim to deal with late game, you've got Tristana and Hecarim to deal with, and LeBlanc if she did well in the mid game. Ooh. How do you deal with that, though? Shield. Yeah, just kill them all. <laughs> Take Cassidy. Uh, the other storyline that we haven't really touched on is uh, Hero, the coach for Xiaogu. He used to be the coach for WE. Ooh, a bit of rivalry. Rivalry there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a hard word. Yep, he'll be that blonde guy standing behind them. This is actually Doin B, though, so the other blonde guy. Yeah. 
But it is going to be the Kastanen lock-in. Now, Kastanen is a good answer to LeBlanc. Obviously, uh, his lane phase, although it's more about just being equal on farm because you're still a melee-based champion. Um, but it's really hard for LeBlanc actually to burst through Kastanen's shield that he'll get. So it's actually, it's not that awful of a matchup. I think it would actually favor Kastanen as far as the lane phase is concerned. I think the big turning point for that, though, it's going to be the junglers in that opposition. You've got the Rek'Sai locked in, and I believe that was uh, the Gragas locked in as well. Yep. So Swift and Spirit on the screen right potential. now. Yeah, and you can see the Gragas and Rek'Sai right there. Will they be able to tilt this mid matchup in favor of Doin B once again, or will Shie end up coming out on top as he's taking that uh, Kassadin into LeBlanc? Once again, Mystic onto Sivir, taking it away from TNT, who decides to match his hair to Riot Girl Tristana. It's important to note, though, that Kassadin's not going to have really any kill pressure on LeBlanc without his uh, his Rift Walk available. It's mm. going to be very hard to kill LeBlanc, but he'll be able to survive the lane just fine. Yeah, I think that's the more important thing, because even though Shiei didn't really have a lot of kill potential on Ari either, um, he had a little bit more difficulty surviving. Well, he got the Snowball uh, pre-Ari 6. Yeah. Uh, and so obviously if she I had her, her yeah. post six that she would be able to spirit walk and try to avoid that. But when LeBlanc gets that snowball so early on you, your lane's pretty much done. Yeah, so Dwayne B very strong. We'll see if he's able to duplicate his success as we're loading into the rift for game number two. And we have loaded into the rift. It's Xiaogu versus World Elite in game number two of set number two of day number one of week number four of the wow. League of Legends Pro League. Yeah, that's a lot of numbers right there. But the only thing you need to know about right now is TCT is about to get ganked. Spirit and Conan go forward. He drops a ward. Mystic sees it. And they let him go. <laughs> that's anticlimactic. I know. You went really high there. And I was, I was like, so he excited. hasn't wound up the animation at all. In fact, did he have play? No, he did not. Nope. So he hasn't skill skilled any ability yet. Yeah. So with that, you actually have a recall coming out of TNT and TCT. As you saw the showing from TCT in the bottom, but decides to back away. Doinby dashes forward, drops a ward, and gets right on out of there. Spirit. Oh! Hits oh. him. Uh-oh, this could be dangerous. The death sentence lands as well. Doinby is burning that crystalline flask to try staying alive. He hasn't burned any summoners just yet. The Ignite goes burnt. Is he going to get out? And yeah, he is, in fact, able to do exactly that. The rest of Xiaogu are in position to keep him alive, but that delays his lane just a bit. Yep, it will definitely give a strong advantage to Xie. Uh, the thing that I want to touch upon, though, is teams both started out in a standard five point covering their jungle entrances and this is something that's very common is that you step forward and you ward and you make sure that the enemy team sees you place a ward to kind of mind game them and speaking of mind games yeah oh boy aluka's Aww. trying to set up a freeze too oh no he suddenly found out the ignite goes down they're gonna try burning through his health bar as quick as they can he burns flash and gets under the turret but aluka's like man that freeze was set up so good, too. And this is what we were just about to talk about. It's the mind game, because then you rotate top. You make sure that you get the lane swap. Aluka obviously had no idea that they were going to be waiting in the bush for him. They didn't pull the minion wave to do a fast push. Instead, it's going to be a freeze. But they forced the flash as well as the TP out of Aluka. Yeah, and Xiaogu, they clear out their own side red and immediately swing up to the top, not even going to go to clear the blue buff or even head through that side of the jungle. They want to try diving Aluka, but this guy's smart. He yep. learns fast. And I misspoke. It is actually going to be a fast push, especially with so many members rotating towards that top lane. Aluka, like you said, makes the correct maneuver, pulls all the way off, and more importantly, Conan timed his back appropriately, and they've now given Aluka some resources to deal and hopefully get back to this turret. This is saving Private Aluka, and he needs to get back <laughs> on the tower with uh, at least two other members. Yeah, hopefully he can make it under there while the push continues from Doin V and Shie in the mid. And in the bottom lane, you've got the solo farm from Mystic. So the big question is, will they be able to make it? Aluka's clearing out his red buff right now, so the vertical jungling is not going to be happening from Xiaogu. And V's actually even teleporting as Mystic went for a fast shove. And without any kill pressure, he feels totally safe. Yeah, exactly. He's able to do that because he knows where all of the resources from WE are, so he knows he can't get four-man dove like they were about to do to Luka, but hey, he got back to the tower. He did, and look who's there with him. It's Spirit to make sure that there isn't going to be any sort of shilly, silly shenanigans. Conan's actually waiting in the wings. Remember, he took death sentence level one, so they could be looking for a pick right now, except for the fact that he shows himself, and they're not looking for a pick at all. He's just saying hello. Yeah. Oh. Speaking of hello. 
Hello. It's Good like, uh... Goodbye? Yeah. It's like poking on Facebook. Oh. No. Some damage coming across as Doin B forced to get out of the harass. What do you mean, though? No? They, no. were, they were poking. But uh, this is important. LeBlanc losing the matchup and effectively an isolated lane. So the big thing about when lane swaps come through is it isolates the mid lane. So it works really well if you have a hyperscaling mid laner. Of course, in this case, we have two assassins, Cassid and LeBlanc. But the fact that Join B was delayed to his lane because he got caught up in that level one gave Shea the advantage and it's starting to pay off, forcing uh, Join B back early again. And just like that, Doin B goes for the first recall. Gets some more consumables and gets a Fairy Charm. B trading with some excellent harass on the Mystic. Not having unit collision is working pretty solid for V right now. He's getting some big damage across. He's got Ignite, but suddenly realizes he may have extended just a touch too far. Runs back to the safety of his minion wave. I'd like to think that Conan completely meant to do that, but meanwhile in the mid lane, nope, never mind. Yeah. Conan flashed forward and he hooked Targon proc on a minion. <laughs> Deliberate. Yep. It was just a... <laughs> it was a zoning flash. It was to save Mystic. He was going to lose so much health. He needed the... <laughs> the Targon to heal him. Yeah. Exactly. It, it ended up working out so well. Pay no attention to the fact that Mystic had to burn his health. His heal. Shh. Minor detail. Minor detail. The fast push coming out of TNT as he looks to take down that turret. You can see Tristana doing some serious damage here. Spirit trying to help save it, but... He can't quite make it in time, and suddenly Aluka, who's all by his lonesome, has to back away once again. One of the few champions that can really keep up and even overshadow Sivir and her uh, siege potential is Tristana, and it's because her satchel now, her E, is able to stack onto a tower and then do extra damage when she finally gets enough autos and it times out and procs. Some serious damage there. The smite from Squid secures the Krug, while the rest of the fast push occurs on the bottom side of the map. So far, the turret is still standing. There's going to be a cannon mini wave coming if they can install it. Oh, now it gets out of the turret in time. So that turret's not going to fall quite this way. Let's kind of take stock of everything that's really happened in this lane swap. So we uh, we had some mind games. Big thing, Doin B was delayed to lane. Aluka had to burn all of the summoners. And really what this turns out to is that Aluka has been suffering probably the most. I mean, Doin B's having a rough go at it, but he's staying mm, relatively serviceable as far as CS as we see him get bullied around by Shia on the screen. Yeah. Uh, but Luca, 11 to 23. Uh, more importantly, the level discrepancy, level five to level three on Rumble, especially as teams start to transition and turn towards that dragon. V is going to be so much more potent and ready for a big 5v5 before Luca. Yeah, finally the turret goes down. Instant recall out of TNT, and you can already see TCT heading down to the bottom along with Swift as they could be looking to help defend the turret. With four members on the bottom side of the map, Xiaogu, Feeling very strong after this one. They do turn on to Conan and pick him up, going two members wow. into the three here. They might be able to get another kill. Mystic goes down to V. Xiao Gu just slaughtered the He's bottom. He's got a onslaught of shadows. Go for the dive level six. It's a double kill for V. And of course, V got the level up in the middle of that fight. Had the onslaught of shadows, knew that they could chase, just correctly juggle the aggro. Beautiful right there. And that's what we were talking about. The big difference so far in these teams is the discrepancy between the top laners. They're both. Vi oh, hold on. Yeah, some action in Rip. the mid lane. TCT with the roam helps Doin B out. He's like, you know what? You're at a deficit. Let me let me cover that for you. I love Alistar as uh, it's not a response to Cassidy. Obviously, Cassidy was picked into the Alistar, but I always love Alistar as a response to Cassidy just because he has so much kill potential in Cassidy pre level six because he can just walk up behind him, pop him off the tower, and dive him. That's exactly what we saw. Suddenly, it's four to zero in favor of Xiao Gu. Finally, Aluka gets to the top lane. He's like, I finally closed the CS gap, guys. I'm even with my opponent. Wait, where did these kills come from? Wait, he has his ultimate and I don't? <laughs> yeah. B doing very solid. Once again, opting for the Merc Treads first and looking for the Trinity Force second in that hyper aggressive Hecarim build with Swift. He secures his red buff on this side of the map. And really, Xiaogu are feeling very phenomenal. They're up 3,000 gold. They've secured that first turret and they're still even managing to hold the bottom tier one as well. Fairly even across the board as far as CS as well, despite the discrepancy in the top lane. The question now is, is how are Xiaogu going to transition their power spike um, from taking the first tower in the top lane into an advantage into the bottom side of the map for that dragon? Definitely keep track of that. So far, there isn't a lot of vision around that side as Xiai trades with Doinbi a bit. Typically, the big indicator I've seen 
uh, has been vision. People put wards, they take scuttle crab, they prepare for dragon by making sure that they can't get flanked. Another way to they do it. They don't rush top on both your junglers. Yeah, is also to just kill the uh, kill someone. And V right now looks like he's going to be the best candidate for that, as he's got some serious damage. And Aluka still isn't level six, especially now that Swift is on that side of the map. So excited to see where the junglers do end up going. What's important is because both, oh, this is cool. So V and Swift have uh, teleports effectively. You have the teleport summoner available for V, and likewise, you have the Rek'Sai ult available for Swift. They can actually gank the enemy teleport, Aluka here, and if they kill him, it's not like WE can respond with the dragon because Swift and uh, V can quickly just be on the other side of the map because tunnels have been placed appropriately. So this is actually a really cool pressure point, understanding that they have complete map control and pressure here. They just need to eliminate that poor little Rumble. <laughs> They're doing a pretty solid job so far. It's a 25 CS lead. Chie Rift walks out of that turret as Doinby and Swift zone him away. That's the duo we see in action. And this is actually pretty interesting to see so far. Xiao Gu so far haven't been relying on Swift for, uh, on Doinby for their carry like they did in the last game. It's been Swift who went for that gank in the bottom lane. And with that, uh, V was able to get two kills. Swift got one of his own. And now that they've got complete control of the map and a complete lack of vision from WE, Shadowview looked to take their first direct. Nope, you're absolutely right. Uh, unfortunately, Doing B fell behind in the mid lane, so not a lot of kill pressure right there. And there's the dragon. It's the caster curse. You talk about how they're going to gank top lane. Unfor fortunately for Aluka, yeah. he caught it and he backed up, so it was actually just a really good response from WE to see what they were thinking, but... I really wanted to die. I like to think it was actually the caster curse speaking to Doinby through time, time and space. He heard a voice in his head saying, they're going to gank top. <gasps> oh no, I should back away. And so he goes under the turret. So Doinby doing pretty solid in the mid lane. He actually opted for a more defensive build this game with the Chalice as V finds Aluka on the backside. He actually does damage to, to the minions instead of to Aluka. Oh, the really minions solid are more play. of a threat at this point. Yeah. That's a level eight Hecarim to a poor little level six level. Poor little guy not doing so well. I just, I always imagine a Luka, like no matter what champion he's on, he's Scion, Maokai, like these big, massive, bulky champions, Meganite's like, oh, poor little Luka. <laughs> poor little Scion. Poor little guy. He just wants to charge through the enemy team. That would scare me. I really want Rumble to get a Roomba skin, just because I feel like he's a, a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Rumble Roomba? Yeah, or Ramus to get a Roomba skin. So basically, he just wears a giant cat costume and sits on top of a Roomba? I don't know what you guys use your Roombas for, but <laughs> I use mine for vacuuming. Oh, man. I've seen the video. You, okay, so you do get the reference. Thank you. Yeah. I just don't understand what people's obsession is with putting their cats on top of vacuum cleaners. I was about to start going into detail into why cats are superior Roomba riders. Mercy. <laughs> V has a nice big wave pushed up in the top as he's going to continue farming it out. About a 26 CS lead now on top of Aluka on top of those kills. On Swift. top? On top, on top. Swift on top of that secures the skull oh. crab, dodges the body slam, and the equalizer comes out from Aluka, but I don't think it's going to be enough as V ignites him, doesn't even have to burn the Onslaught of Shadows. They don't even decide to turn on the spirit. I mean, this is, a, again, a classic problem. This is exactly what we were talking about. A Luka, when he's placed on champions that aren't those hyper tanks, or I guess I'll just call them super tanks, he absorbs so much of Spirit's time and energy just to help him go even or be serviceable in the lane that Spirit's not able to impact any other point on the map. That's what we're seeing right now. It's 5-0 and in favor of Xiao Gu. TCT looks for some damage onto Conan as the wave was pushing forward, but TNT is not ready to follow up with only his BF Sword of Boots. He's just going to continue farming try to match that CS that Mystic has. And things really seem to be a little bit slower this game. The majority of the uh, plays and kills so far have been around Swift. So we've really got to keep an eye on his progress. We're shifting back to more of Xiao Gu's expected yeah. identity and being a Swift carry team. And the reason why things are okay to kind of slow the pace down is because there's really no big objectives to contest, which is why now we're contesting over little objectives, like, like the blue buff. Blue. And with that, three members go in. Flash knockup finds TCT. He's taken away from his own lantern, forced to flash the wall. Doinby could look to chase as everyone else has joined the battle, but more importantly, V has joined the battle. Doinby manages to get the kill onto Spirit over the wall. V comes around as there is a very solid death sentence, but no follow-up. WE back away, and the blue is going to be stolen by Xiaogu. Likely, there's what 
It's going to go to Dormbeat. Yeah, what, what can they steal? This is a wonderful call from Xiaogu right now. Knowing that they're so far ahead in the top lane and knowing that they have the, the TP there, it doesn't even matter that there's no TP discrepancy because even if a Luka followed, and that would have been a perfect rumble in a small corridor in a jungle like that, there's just... Hecarim is massive, and Rumble just can't can't compete with that damage. So they immediately translate their pressure to the bottom side of the map, knowing that it can be a 4v5, or even if it is a 5v5, that they have the advantage anyway. Yeah, so Xiaogu returning to the form that has worked so well for them. TNT actually going 1v2 here. Oh. Flash dodges the hook oh and my. even gets the kill onto Conan. Boomerang is going to hit him. Is he going to be able to get out of this? He jumps the Flash heal. He keeps himself alive. Here's TCT. He breaks the spell shield. V is joining the battle. Mystic is almost surely dead. Great body slam for the slow, but Mystic is removed from V. So much damage, and what a play. A beautiful performance from TNT. I said it before, and I'll say it again. This guy will eventually be an elite AD carry. There he is on your screen. Doesn't have purple hair anymore, but a <laughs> great smile because that was fantastic. Yeah, he just styled on Mystic and Conan, and so far that seems to be the name of the game as Xiaogu have been styling on World Elite throughout this entire series. And TNT has kind of been the background for a very long time. He's not new to the Chinese scene, formerly went by Fish, Quiet, and Avenger. Oh, hold on. Yeah, TCT was trying to bait out some action there as he was quote-unquote caught by WE, but instead Swift and Doinby have joined the battle. They don't have B, he's on the other side of the map. And TNT's at pretty low health, so they decide to back away. But as I was going to say, it's, it's it's great to finally see TNT get a true stage and to kind of set him up for greatness and to have some fantastic resources around him like Doinby, like Swift. And now Doinby has to run away from the four-man gank squad of WE. And he's mobile enough. He is on LeBlanc with the Athens on Holy Grail first. He's got more than enough mana to keep himself out of there. He's even looking for the flank right now with the mimicked distortion to fully clear out that minion wave. Actually goes in as Swift decides he wants a fight. This is three versus four here. Now four versus four as TNT has joined the battle. Mystic comes in, making it a three versus five, and the kills are coming across left and right. It's QG picking up a majority of them. They're turning in. He's getting reset after reset here. Are they going to dive this? He jumps under the turret to try to get damage on the spirit, but little Tristana can't take that turret quite long enough. He goes low. Is spirit going to go down? It is an ace for Chaogu. And again, V is just so massive from this early game. Did fantastic in the mid game, and it's just starting to pay off as this game. I say mid game. It's only 16 minutes in. Yeah. This Hecarim is massive. Came into the backside of the fight like billard balls. WB <laughs> were stacked up, and they just got scattered around. Reset after reset for TNT. And this game is on the back of V. And what's really encouraging is that V primarily was playing a lot of tank champions. Hecarim is a big most played champion for him, but starting to see him take more of a carry oriented role as again, moving pressure off of Swift. This isn't just a team about the jungle now. It can be about Doinby. It can be about TNT and TCT, and it can also be about V. Yeah, a really great play out of Xiaogu is going to reward them with the ace. They knocked down that mid tier one turret. Unfortunately, they were not able to take the mid tier two just yet, but Dragon has now respawned and everyone's headed onto that side of the map. TNT looking very strong and uh, Doinby very strong himself as he decided to go for the more defensive build this time. He doesn't want to take any chances with Xie's casting. We talked about the Swippy Swappy. So the Athenes and the Chalice, I call the Thirsty Cup and the Big Gulp. <laughs> Which you can now purchase from 7-Eleven. Yep. <laughs> Oh my gosh. The sippy cup and the big gulp. Thirsty cup. The thirsty cup. Why is it, why is the, the thirsty cup? I don't know. Because you're thirsty for the mana region? I guess so. What about the forbidden idol? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that one on air. <laughs> yeah, so the dragon is going to be secured by Xiaogu as they've got complete control over that side of the map. And with all of the tier ones down, what's next for Xiaogu? The game. <laughs> I mean, to be frank, uh, we're at a 10k gold deficit. I said mid-game into late game because the game was just spiraling so out of control. Again, it's only 18 minutes. The surrender button isn't even an option for WE. Yeah, this game is accelerating quickly out of control. And despite the, I would say, a better draft phase to their previous game, it's just not quite working out this well for Shaku. But again... Uh, for 
the weaknesses in putting a Luka on these champions that he's not comfortable with and absorbing so much of Spirit's time. Uh, WE really excel when Spirit's able to give his attention to either Mystic or Shie. And in a lane swap like that, again, Shie, he did fantastic. He got actually the edge on Doin B, but it didn't equate into anything. Take a look at the wards for Shabu on this side of the map. They don't have a single defensive ward. They're all offensive. And speaking of offense, they find Aluka under his tier two turret and they ignore it completely. Going for the dive, they harass him, burn his flash, burn his equalizer. He just wants some CS, guys. Nice thing is that Aluka is starting to shore up the level discrepancy. He is level 10 to V's level 11. Oh, he just got 12. Darn it, I tried to give you something, Aluka. Still two levels down. I'll keep fishing for him. Yeah, Doing B does secure the blue. No, TNT gets it. He's like, ah, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> What's it with the LPL and stealing blue buffs away from your mid laner? Sometimes you're just thirsty. <laughs> he's got a thirsty, or he's got a big gulp. He doesn't need the blue buff. <laughs> but he already has one, too. No need to be greedy. Dude, Zed needs blue buff. Mm, Cooldown reduction. Yeah, I was going to say, it's the CDR. <laughs> I use it for my energy regen. I would say that normally this is about the time that teams are setting up for Baron just because there's a window of opportunity where the dragon is down. So for six <laughs> minutes, you can play to the top side, but it hasn't spawned yet. Well, you're actually only six seconds away. So hold on to that point and... Uh, now. Okay. <laughs> so teams can start setting up for the Baron now. Oh, really? I mean, that was your point. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, though. Yeah, don't be getting aggressive. Swift dives into the front line. He's 1v5 here, but suddenly V has joined the battle, and that's a little bit more even. TCT tanking under the turret. Don't be gets under the ignite, burns him down as V is doing some serious work here. TCT doesn't even care that there's a turret there. The rest of Xiaogu complete the dive, and so far Mystic has been the only one to go down, but finally TCT falls to Xie. And this is going to be the tier two turret siege out of QG. That was a six versus four. And the reason why I say <laughs> that is because. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Poor Aluka. Tristana wasn't there, and WE had a tower. Yep. Uh, excellent play out of Xiaogu. They take down the tier two. Xie looking to clear out some of the wreck side tunnels, but he's not even going to get that for himself as he's running for his life, but I think he's going to run out of mana before he can outrun Chao Gu. He's fine. Swift can't cut him off just because he is such low health that it would be a risk that he could trade one for one. And I don't think he uh, he wants to die for free to Xie. Yeah. One, one, and eight. You got to protect the KDA. He's got a nine KDA right now. Doing Swift things. Hashtag Swift things. Going B, despite going for a fully defensive start, has now completed a needlessly large rod and is shoring up that key KDA to a 4-0-2. Oh, but I mean, look at B, man. He's 8 0 oh, 4 You can even see on the player cam on the bottom left down there, TNT is grinning from ear to ear. QG are having a great game. He's probably looking at the CS difference between Doin B and Shie right now. <laughs> That's 70 CS. If you have to think that every 12 to 13 CS is effectively a kill's worth of gold, you just do that math real quick. <laughs> Six kills. Yeah. Seven kills. Six and a half. Less. Ish. Because he got 12 to 13. 12 to 13. Yeah, it's about five or six. That's pretty cool. Regardless of those kills, however, why you Pop. CS to get kills when you can just get kills? Don't he gets pulled in through the hook, however. He's so low. Oh! oh! Spirit <laughs> finally is going to catch him from behind. B coming in from the backside on Mystic is going to absolutely destroy him. Swift cutting off the escape for Spirit. He says, you know what? You kill my hyperscaling mid LeBlanc. Well, we're just going to make you pay for it. He did it with style. I can't imagine that Spirit's very <laughs> angry about that. With the cask. It's always yeah. so satisfying. With four members dead, you've got QG now shoving up the mid lane. I believe that's a cannon minion wave, so they should be able to take this inhibitor. Shiei's back up, Mystic's up in five, and instead they decide to sack the mid lane and take the last tier two turret. They have the unbreakable will available to them, so should they want to just straight tank a tower, although the minion wave's there, they can always just have Alistar press R. Although Alistar oh looking for gosh. the... F oh, that's me. Yes. <laughs> the turret goes down. TCT 1v4 now as he's trying to tank up in the front Flag. line. CC locks him up so much, but they just cannot hurt him. Equalizer cuts off his escape path. Righteous Glory now burned in order to escape. And V goes in. He scatters the billiard balls. Conan is the first to fall. It's a double kill now for TNT. It's V who gets a kill for his own. And while Aluka decides to join up with the rest of his team, he realizes they're already dead, so just runs back to the fountain. Beautiful play from V right there. He hit four, I think it was either three or four members. And TNT with his positioning over the wall, 
splash damage across all, leaps in, and that's a clean sweep for Xiaogu. Yeah, Xiaogu going 2-0 in this series with an incredible game. We saw multiple carries coming across for Xiaogu. It wasn't